what does it mean to own your space? So own your space, which is my book, keynotes, workshops, is all around giving yourself permission to be the person presenting information. If you are giving a sales presentation or you are being interviewed for a new position, do you own your space? Do you look comfortable? Do you look confident? Do you come across both confidently and competently? And in owning your space, you need to understand the verbal and non-verbal elements of your physical space. In other words, what you say, but equally important is how you say it. And then we look at your virtual owning your space. Is your LinkedIn profile complete? Do you have a good picture of yourself? Think about owning your podium when you give a presentation. Do you look comfortable? Do you look commanding? So these are just some of the topics that I cover in Own Your Space. And I ask you to really think about, do you maximize the overall way you project yourself in every interaction? Because if you do, you are truly owning your space. So when you think of owning your space or presenting information well or connecting well with others or owning your headspace, your physical space, your interpersonal space, your social space, you might refer to these as soft skills. But these really are hardcore competencies. When we look at competencies that allow you, your teams, you as a leader, as a manager, as an employee, to connect with your customers, your clients, your patients, whoever they are, are we employing all of these skills to really connect? And over the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a lot of virtual presenting. I'm very excited. I'm going to be going to the Institute of Nuclear Power on Monday and actually doing an in-person presentation. But yes, like you, most of my interactions have been virtual. And the reality is that virtual connection requires greater deliberation. It requires us being more intentional. And what I'm seeing amongst managers is that there's often a disconnect between me as the manager, my employee. Am I really making the most and creating productive virtual and soon to be hybrid teams? And these are just some of the things we're all looking at now. So wherever you're at in your career right now, I want you to really ask yourself, are you mastering your communication skills? Are you owning your space? And I break it down into, there is the concept of your physical space. So that means your presentations. And so much of our presentations are now virtual. So just a reminder to everybody, we want to always look into the camera that is synonymous with talking and connecting with somebody. The importance of doing that cannot be overlooked. If you're presenting information, there are ways and places that you can place your notes so that while you're glancing down at your notes, you still go back and look at your camera or if you look away from your camera for a specific reason either you have another screen or you are pointing something out let the person that you are connecting with know or let your audience know so that's elementary now we know that we want to connect something as simple as your lighting in a virtual world, can we see you? Can we see your face? Can we see your eyes? I'm still seeing people who are backlit. And when you're backlit, you can often look like a cardboard cutout. <laughs> Famously, I say you can look like you're in the witness protection program. We want to see you. And of course, we understand there are moments where it's difficult to have your camera on. But where you can show up with your camera on and verbally, and non-verbally illustrate that you are present. And then if you notice my background, I've chosen to have a virtual background because I wanted to have the soft skills or a hardcore competency. I use a green screen. And the reason that I'm using a green screen is it makes my background more crisp when I'm using a virtual background. I also, in presentations, instead of always having to go to the slide share, I tend to have my slides behind me. That way, I can still say, stay connected to my audience when I am presenting. Now, there are times where I'll go to a slide share, but it's very intentional because then my slide will take up the entire screen. 
but often in that slide share, I'll stop completely and just go back to a real connection. So these are the kind of skills I'm hoping that you'll all acquire as we continue to navigate volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous work environments. And these are things that can make such a difference in making the people or person that you are talking to feel connected. So that's your physical presence. And then your interpersonal presence. Sometimes we just overlook the fact that we're speaking to different personality styles. We're often speaking to people from around the world. People have different styles, different ways of interacting. And are we taking the time to tune in and ask the right questions? If you haven't seen it, I urge you to watch an interview I did with the author of Build Your Cultural Agility and Cultural Agility, Paula Kalajiri. We had a wonderful conversation about how our brains tend to shut down in times of danger and times of uncertainty. And that makes us grasp onto the familiar. And this is a time actually to expand our networks and connect with people who come from different backgrounds and different persuasions and different everything with the word on different. But do we perceive the difference as something to respect and show interest in and not as danger? So, so many things to think about. Then there is our social presence, our ability to network and build relationships. And do we master that? And do we connect with people on that level? And then there's our virtual presence, which has become more pervasive. But when I say virtual presence, it also means how do you show up in your LinkedIn profile and your Facebook? And are you using these platforms to reinforce and endorse others? I belong to a wonderful mastermind group. And I have to say to all of you, to Todd Churches and to Elaine and to Kim and to Peter Winnick and Bill Sherman and Klaus Rausted and J.D. Gerbshine and, oh my gosh, there are too many to mention now, Ilya Gorgoris and Coach Khan and indeed all of you. I wish I had a list in front of me. But to my mastermind group, very, very good at endorsing others. Verity, thank you. But just always commenting constructively on a post and engaging. So when I speak about soft skills being a hardcore competency, it's really all around communication mastery, self-awareness mastery, the things that make day-to-day -day interactions so much more valuable. So please join me, either set up a meeting on my website, nadiaspeaks.com. I do have monthly power hours. I've been speaking extensively about the need for each and every person to master these skills, these so-called soft skills, which are so critical in the overall career success of an individual, a team, an organization productivity. So just some thoughts for this uh, Thursday. And I'm delighted because I'll be doing another interview on Saturday morning. I'm talking to Diane Bogino, and we're actually talking about assessments and the part that assessments play in creating self-awareness with our teams. So continue to join me. I'm Nadia Bilchik. Look forward to staying in touch, be it LinkedIn or Facebook or Clubhouse or just a good old phone call.